Next up, we've got a main card bout at 155 pounds between Daniel, the golden boy. Is that right? Yeah, Daniel, the golden boy, Zell Huber, taking on uh, Christos Yagos. Yagos has a lot more experience here. He is a, uh, they list him out of Blockhouse MMA. I was pretty sure he's a Kill Cliff FC fighter. I think that that is still true. And this is an interesting matchup because on the one hand, you know, Yago's more experienced at the UFC level, more experienced overall, way more pro fights, but he's 33 years of age, taking on a 24-year-old here in Daniel Zahuber. Zahuber, one and one in the UFC. He won over Lucas Almeida um, on the contender series. That was a good win via decision in a back-and-forth contentious fight uh, that he was clearly the better fighter in. Trey Ogden was able to get the unanimous decision victory in a fight where Zahuber really seemed like he stayed on the bus. You know, he just had a hard time getting up for that fight, had a hard time letting anything go. UFC debut, UFC jitters. How many times have we seen that happen before? So I'm not going to hold that against him too much because his very next fight, he went out there, got a clear, decisive win over Lando Venata, landed a lot of hard shots, and looked like a guy who was ready to take a step forward in his career. Now he's coming into this fight against Christos Yagos, and he's going to be um, nine years younger on paper. He is going to have a three inch height advantage. He's six foot one compared to just five ten for Yago. He's a much bigger fighter with a much bigger frame, and he's going to use that 77 inches worth of reach to try and keep Yagos away from him. Yagos likes to barrel in to the pocket. He's got some wrestling, some ability to take people down. His cardio is god awful. It's always been a red flag. The way that this guy fights normally puts himself in tremendous danger. Um, let's look at it. He beat Ricky Glenn via knockout round one. Ricky Glenn, another guy who is not on the right side of 33. He's 34 years of age, got knocked out there, a little bit old for the division. This man, Yagos, was also submitted in the first round by Tiago Moises. Really not going to hold that one against him too much, just a guy who's a better grappler. I actually thought Yagos could compete there because he tends to start so hot. But against Armand Sarukian, Armand put him down with a shocking quickness. Easy, easy, easy. Sean Soriano, that's a free win. That guy's never won a fight in the UFC. Carlton Minus, that's an Alaska FC guy that shouldn't have been in the UFC. Uh, Drakkar Close, fair enough. That's a fine loss. Demir Hadovic, another guy who's probably not UFC level at all. Mizuto Hirota, no longer with the company. Charles Oliveira, real fighter, submitted him easily uh, after a you know crazy first round. Henderson Batista, he got the win there. So it's like when you look at his UFC uh, resume overall, I'm not sold on Chris Osiagos. He loses a lot. He's six and six in the UFC. More than half of his losses are by finish. I think Sel Huber is going to finish him. I think that Chris Osiagos doesn't like to fight long fights. I don't think he likes to go past seven and a half minutes. I think Sel Huber is going to put a whooping on him, honestly, and um, and potentially submit him as well. Um, Zell Huber tends to be a guy that operates more with the strikes, um, but he is training at an extreme couture. If topology is to be believed, I haven't uh, been able to dig through his social media in great depth yet, but I believe that that is accurate. Looks like he's training with my guy, Eric Nixick. Uh, absolutely. So we gave Eric Nixick a shout out on this show last week as well, because people were talking about Eugene Behrman, great coach, elite coach. I won't hear the slander after the fact um, on, on uh, Eugene Behrman, but we also talked about Eric Nixick's an elite coach, right? He's going to try and prepare you for exactly what you need to do to win. Um, Yagos and Luke Sanders, same, same. Fair enough, man. Starts hot, big power, some ability to grapple, but it all falls apart after that first round, sometimes in that first round. And Yagos does not have a great chin, though, so might want to cover the KO. I totally agree, man. I think that Yagos is a guy that doesn't have a great chin. I think that he's got some power, but I don't think he's being set up to win here. I think he's being set up to lose. I don't think that the UFC cares about uh, Yagos, you know, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful. I just mean he's a six and six guy that they have on roster. Whereas this other kid is somebody that they would like to promote. Um, 13 and one great shiny record that they could do a lot with 20 and 10. That's a journeyman type record, my brother. So uh, no disrespect, but I think Zell Huber is going to get a win over Chris 